Welcome to uh, part two of the DR, DRO installation using a caliper on my Monarch 10 E. So at the end of part one, I had to stop because uh, I blamed Mr. Bozo from coming, coming to visit me. And uh, I have to apologize to Mr. Bozo. Uh, it's just a dummy at this end. Nothing to do with Mr. Bozo. Uh, interesting enough, the when I said uh, I thought I was tapping for a 540, which I was, and as you can see in the 440 hole, there's a bolt. Well, I thought that 440 was a 540, so I drilled and tapped, I drilled and tapped my part, but that bolt fell right in the hole, and so that's what left me confused and sitting here fighting away trying to figure out what the hell I did and it was me just didn't know what I was getting at so anyway uh, I've gotten 540 bolts and it all goes back I've already had it all together finished it and so as you can see I've gone ahead and shaped my part um, so it's ready for the uh, sorry about that I pull a hand it's ready for the actual installation so the, it'll be sitting in the lathe like that and the caliper uh, will be bolting on like that. So uh, we'll get uh, further along here and uh, take get everything mounted on the lathe and then bring you back on it. Uh, one thing I just wanted to show you that I thought was interesting, this is something I picked up from somebody and you can see it's ancient, an old milk carton here. And the fellow that did this, and I have it for both drills and uh, taps, is uh, envelopes, all sizes, he, and he wrote the drill number, the tap number, the clearance drill. Um, I've got two of these full, uh, and it's nice. There's uh, quite an assortment there that I can always uh, dig into, besides all the other various uh, uh, taps that I have. But anyway, I thought I'd show that just an old school way of getting it done. Well, before we go back and look at the uh, Monarch, I thought I'd share a little tool buy stopped at an estate sale the other day and dug and dug and dug and I finally found the box that had machinist tools in it and this is uh, half of what I brought home some of the stuff I've already put away in my box most of this stuff's gonna go over in my wood shop just as secondary items uh, but uh, uh, I paid uh, walked out of there $30 uh, with other items besides the machinist tools so pretty good buy and then uh, my buddy Mike O'Connor, um, he called me the other day and he was going to uh, a machine shop that was going out of business. And uh, he, um, he said, why don't you meet me there on Monday? And uh, I couldn't get away. And of course he sent me some photos of the nice purchases he got there. And I said, yeah, that's okay. I, I don't need to go buy anything. So then, uh, this weekend, uh, my good friend, Mr. Lipton, Tom, called me and said, hey, can you run to a machine shop? The guy's selling out and there's a comparator there. And I said, yeah, I can, I can run there for you, not a problem. I'll probably end up spending money. Well, unfortunately, the comparator got sold before I could get to it or before Tom could get to it to buy it for him. But uh, here's, what, uh, here's what I ended up walking out with. <laughs> so... If you remember in one of my last videos, I showed you my little cases or bins that I made to hold my cant twist clamps. Well, I guess now those are obsolete since I got more cant twist clamps. So these are uh, six D's. These are the uh, four and a half D's, and these are the uh, two and a half D's. So uh, not bad for uh, two hundred bucks. Oh, wait a minute. There's a little bit more for 200 bucks. Um, let's see. Let's uh, move over here. So for 200 bucks, um, ended up with uh, Criterion boring bars, a couple of quarter-inch reamers, uh, 250 and 249.5. Some uh, chamfering tools, carbide. Thin bit tool holders, which I didn't have. I have the thin bits. One straight knurling wheel. Four AXA uh, tool posts. Two of them with uh, the tool holder. 
the insert tool holder in it and uh, miscellaneous inserts stare at mag base a little pot mag base and then a uh, gallon of uh, trim salt which is a uh, water soluble uh, coolant so uh, not a bad seagull run there for uh, 200 and uh, 200 bucks and then the estate sale for 30 bucks um, oh there's one more I was using it as a pointer in my hand there there's another uh, car uh, boring bar and then uh, while the buying spree was on I went and uh, <laughs> I went and picked myself up another toy. It's been on the want list. Let me set the camera down there. Can't get it open. But a brand new uh, Mitotoyo 4 inch uh, digital, digital caliper. Nice little unit. That's been on my want list. Uh, 75 bucks. Pretty happy with that buy also. I got to get off Craigslist, guys. Killing me. <laughs> All right, let's move on in this video. Hope you enjoyed the little uh, tool tool buy. Well, this is kind of a tool buy. Uh, my good friend Chewy and I did a little swap. Uh, so he brought me this 3x3 three three, uh, granite uh, block that has the uh, stainless steel inserts in it for going down onto the uh, mag. Just a sweet little tool. Really glad to add that to my arsenal here. And then you've seen this one in the past. Um, it's a fly cutter that he made. Uh, it'll go up to about eight inches. Um, I've used it in the past. He took it home and then uh, it was in part of a trade deal. Works really, really well. So a couple more little items for the shop. Um, here's a little shot of a setup we did the other night. My uh, good buddy Flea Market Dave, he came over to the shop uh, he bought a little giant uh, power hammer and we're uh, refurbishing some of the parts and uh, this was one of the setups where these holes were oblonged and we uh, set up and bored to uh, get them uh, concentric with each other and then we'll make new bushings for them. Uh, we've got another one of these to do so this is just a real quick uh, shot of the setup. It's already been broken down I kind of just put it back together uh, but we had a good time working on it and uh, we got more to do. Uh, this is a quickie just to talk about. So this is my whiteboard in my shop and I've shown this before. I've got a little thing here, tools loaned and tools borrowed. It's easy to forget what went out of the shop and it's also easy to forget what you brought in and borrowed from a buddy. So up here on top you can see it says Smirt Knockout. I'm going to say about two years ago at least he borrowed a Greenlee uh, Conduit Punch uh, Knockout and uh, he returned it just yesterday and it's not, uh, he, he lives quite a ways away. We don't get to see each other. We we're high school buddies, lived together after high school and we we're in our early 20s. And he's carried it, in, carried it in his truck for all that time. And actually, I think he switched trucks once or twice. And he goes, it just drove him nuts that that thing was always sitting in his truck. And uh, he came by the other night and uh, he can get his name off my whiteboard now. So uh, it's a good trick, guy. Well, it's been on there so long. It's I got to get the uh, cleaner. It's almost froze in there. But anyway, it's a good way to uh, track your tools in and out. Okay, the unit uh, is pretty much ready to um, glue in place. Um, but I think uh, before I break it down, just to show you guys, it's one of those things I'm deciding here. It's the chicken or the eggs. What's going to come first? Glue the caliper on first or glue it onto the quill? Um, still trying to decide that. But it's ready to go. And uh, so I think what I'm going to do is see if I can get this can't twist clamp there and as an alignment. And then uh, I'll bring you back. You don't have to watch me try to fight this clamp on there. All right, a little change of plan. I was having a problem trying to get the can't twist to bite on this little lip right here. So uh, tactical keychains got these little, uh, I think they're called tie mags. So that gives me something to bump the caliper up against for alignment. And then just to show you how, what I got here. So 
I have the shaft here turned for the inside diameter of this guy right here and then this little stub here is just fits in the end of the quill which will give me straight alignment and I'm going to put a little bit of Vaseline a real light coat here so that nothing will stick to it and, uh, and then I've got to uh, decide which which one I'm going to glue first I think I want to glue this one first I can always undo this and go ahead and then glue the caliper on and then put the screws back in. I think that's going to be the plan of attack. Uh, you guys aren't going to get to watch because you're going to be in the way. And uh, could be some uh, hollering and hooting. So we'll bring you back. Okay, well, it's attached. I used uh, Loctite 430. It's uh, for metal. And uh, I'm not uh, pushing it too hard yet. It's been about five minutes that it's been glued up. And I don't know if you can read the dials there or not, but I'm pretty happy. My dial indicator there is on zero, and I'm on zero basically on the digital. And if I crank a hundred thousandths, I'm 99 and five tenths. I think I can live with that. So all in all, it looks successful. It pulls in, returns back, and, the, and I can take the quill all the way back to where it dies and there's no, uh, no strain. So uh, now, there's the question. I'm gonna go eat dinner and then uh, we're gonna get a drill bit in there, a big drill bit where it'll bite and the quill will do a little rock action and uh, we'll see if it still looks success or not and what it does. Okay, we got a one inch drill and uh, let's see what happens as it tries to torque. I think it's going to be okay. Here we go. No problems. Looks like it's a winner. And always guys, uh, I really appreciate you stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the build. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I think it'll be really successful. Okay, come here, come here.